Good morning. Welcome back to our channel, OET with V and V. Today, we are going to discuss something on speaking some test. You may feel that speaking is somehow easier than by uh, having a class on speaking some test. Yeah, I know that speaking is easy because we studied in English and we've done our professional course in English. And in the workstation, we are discussing in English and we are communicating in English. But I have a doubt, dear students, are you getting in the desired score in your OT, OET examination? Most of the students will say no, because it's not because that you don't know English, you can't communicate in English. It's because you don't know how you are assessed there. That's the reason. So through this lesson, I'm trying to combine or disclose how you are going to be assessed in your OET examination. Are you all ready? Let's start. In OET examination, the first misunderstanding that we have is, I am the person who is going to be assessed, so I have to talk for the entire five minutes. It's total rubbish. It's not like that, that you are going to be assessed doesn't mean that you have to talk for the entire five minutes. No, not at all. You have to talk, it's first. You have to listen, listen carefully. You have to make the opponent to talk, right? So don't think that the entire five minutes you have to talk, the first thing. And the second thing what I would like to inform you is that you are going to be assessed in two categories. You are going to be assessed in two categories. The first one is your language skill and the second one is your clinical skill. As you know that when the OET is a professional test, so definitely your skills are also examined in your professional sites too. That means you should have to know how to do these things as a nurse, as a doctor. Okay, so I already told you that you are going to be assessed in two categories. The first one is your language skill and the second one is your clinical skill. First, we are going to discuss on language skills. Okay, in language skills, how you are going to be assessed. Look, there are four categories out there. The first one is your intelligibility, fluency, appropriateness, grammar and expression you are going to be assessed in four ways. That means they will check your intelligibility, they will check your fluency, your appropriateness of talking, your grammar and expression. This last one, grammar and expression, is something different. That means you have to learn the grammar and about your grammar video classes are there in the channel that you can watch it there. And I just feel that mainly you have to know the parts of speech, Tense, active and passive voice. Ah, yeah, I have prepositions definitely, right? These things you have to learn. Okay, coming back to the first one, intelligibility. What is that? We can check. It means the impact of the pronunciation, intonation, and accent on how clearly your listener can hear and understand what you are saying. Okay, so we can start from the last. The first thing that you have to make sure is the person who is listening you should have to understand clearly what you are explaining. That's the main fact. So we just have a misconception that if I talk too fast, we are considered as we have a good command on English language. It's not at all like that. Okay, you can, the choice is yours. You can talk fast, you can talk slowly. That's no problem. But you have to make sure that what I'm saying is understandable. Got it? Okay. Now come back to the pronunciation. How to learn this pronunciation? There is only one way. To learn pronunciation, you should have to hear English properly. Because all these second languages have a second language speakers have a problem that they have a taste of the regional language. For example, if I say that about uh, Malayali, that when a person from Kerala talks, definitely that Malayalam taste will be there in his accent and even with Tamil Nadu, with some, any other countries or any other states, it will happen. So you should have to hear 
English pronunciation protocol. And you may ask me that how, how you can do that. It's so simple. You can go with a lot, a lot, a lot podcasts are there in your YouTube. You can check it from there. Or I can suggest you the tech.com. A lot of speeches are there. You can listen it. You can understand it. You can learn the pronunciation. And the second thing is an injunction or accent. Okay. When you learn the pronunciation, your accent will be there an intonation. That means uh, I would like to say that the English is an expressive language, right? For example, you know, we usually talk in a flat way. It right? means if you are seeing somebody after a long time, you may ask, how are you? Right? That's no problem. But the first language will not use that way. That, how are you? They say, hey, how are you? This expression that, you know, we should have to stress somewhere. We should have to add uh, some loudness somewhere. These things are called your English, right? Okay, so you have to try to talk as a native speaker. I'm using the word native speaker. So you know English. Okay, I understand, but try to speak as a native speaker, the first thing. Okay, in this category, how you are assessed, what, what things they are checking, they will check your pronunciation, right? Are you stressing the words or not? Your intonation and rhythm and the you should be easily understood. Do they can understand you or not? Okay, this is the first one. I hope you understood this. Okay, if you have any doubts, you please come in comment box and express your comments there. Okay, the second thing is fluency. Fluency, you know that the impact of the speed and smoothness of your speech. It will differ from person to person. Some may speak in a speed. I mean, the rate of speed is high. Maybe somebody is too slow. That doesn't matter. You can maintain your attitude. But if you are talking too much fast, maybe not be audible to the listener. So you make sure that to, to understand the clarity of your speech, what you have to do is that you can take your mobile, you just give a speech, record it, and listen it. Then you will understand it. Yeah, I, um, I audible to others properly. My talking is clear or not. Okay, if you feel that okay, I'm talking too much fast, reduce it. Okay, if you feel that I'm not at all talking openly, so try to improve that. So if to improve your fluency, what you have to do is that you talk yourself, record it, hear it, and then try to improve it. Fine. Okay. And how the scores? Speak at a normal rate, not too much fast, not too much slow. And don't hesitate to search for words or grammar. Speak effortlessly. The main problem what we have in our talking for the second languages is that we may forget some words. For example, you are talking to a patient, you are saying, okay, Mr. X, I hope you are fine and you had your, uh, you had your, you had your, you had your, okay, medicine, right? Or, so this type of, uh, what we say, you should have to talk effortless. That means a fluency must be there. You should not have to search for the words and don't like, in the case of grammar, what has happened. I think, I thought, I will think, you know, this confusion should not have to happen. So learn grammar properly and try to talk continuously, continuously talk, talk, talk. If you are a, uh, studying, if you are studying or it means what you have to do is that you have to change the language to all, you have to speak in English. Maybe others will write it for you. That's not a problem because we are trying to attain a good fortune. So we will talk in English, desire like that. Always try to talk in English, okay? Talk in a normal rate, don't hesitate for words or grammar and speak up on this. You have to talk properly. So the first in indebtedity over, the second one fluency, it's over. And the third one we can check is your appropriateness the impact of your language start professionalism on your listeners understanding and here the word professionalism right here what is that uh, you are a nurse or a doctor so what you have to do is that you have to talk in that way right uh, you have to talk the prof i mean you have to use the professional words the medical terms but that doesn't mean that you should have to use a lot of, of, I mean, medical terms because you are not at all talking to a medical professional. You are talking to a normal citizen 
right? So here, appropriateness is there. And one more thing I would like to say is that whenever you are talking to a patient, you just consider all the situations there. How? Is it an emergency department or a ward or a clinic? This you have to consider, appropriateness, okay? Because all these situations are entirely different and you have to use a different mode of talking there, right? The second thing is that it depends on the age of your listener. For example, you're talking to a 20 years person, and uh, you are talking to a 75 years old person. You can't talk same to both, right? Because a 10 year person is not at all scared of this disease. Maybe, maybe, maybe sometimes, but normally not. But a 75 years old person is totally uh, devastated, right? So you have to use some type of language that by which you can make him in a comfort zone, got it? And here, how you are assessed, use the appropriate formality, tone, phrasing for the contest, right? You have to, you have to decide, right? Okay, I'm talking to this person. You first have to read and understand the setting and you have to read and understand to whom you are talking, what his condition is. As a nurse, you know that, right? to different, different persons, how you have to talk, right? These things you have to consider. And the main thing is they have no difficulty explaining complex procedures. Here, you are language analysis, assist, right? You can say detailed, right? But you remember that you are, only, you are having only five minutes to do all these things, right? So you can't go a detail. You can't go for detail, right? Here, you have to explain a complicated, a difficult procedure, very simple. So that when you have to practice, 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 automatically that. Okay, so the last one of this category is the grammar and vocabulary. Use how you are scored here means use wide range of accurate grammar, use wide range of precise vocabulary, use natural sounding. Right. So you here, there is what we have to do is that you have to learn the grammar separately. You have to enrich your vocabulary. You have to know the medical terms. And if explanation is needed, how you can precise that one. Explanation, okay, fine, we can do that one. But you, have, you know that when you are doing this bit, um, speaking subtest, you have maybe sometimes five tasks. You know that, one, right? So five tasks means total five minutes. Like in that one, you have to gather the information, you have to deliver the information, you have to make the patient come forth. So, so you will not get a time to explain all these things in detail. So you must have to know to explain the things in a precise way, right? So this is about your language skill testing and I'm stopping the video here right now. Next day, we are going to learn how you are assessed in your language skill set. I mean, not language skill set, in your clinical skill set. So I already told the beginning that you are assessed for your language skill and your clinical skill. And now you know that when a language skill what what things you, they are going to assess on you, they, how they are checking you, right? So you learn it. Now, on the next video, we will learn in clinical skills what, what things you have to do, right? And I hope that you understood. And if you have any doubt, please come in the comment box and ask your doubts. Thank you. Thanks a lot.